This lecture will build on the previous one, which discussed different types of experiments. And in this lecture, I'm going to focus on what experiments look like in political science. You might be imagining that experiments have nothing to do with political science, but we can see that they've um, been really useful tools in the study of causal processes in politics. So in this lecture, I'm going to outline three different types of experiments that we see in political science. The first type of experiment are experiments that happen in labs, so lab experiments. And in lab experiments, subjects are recruited to a common location. Typically, subjects are college students, and the common location will be um, an office for some political science professor. Um, so they'll have a site where they can do these experiments. They're not necessarily a location um, that you might imagine having an experiment in, so they're not you know, a chemistry lab. The lab just really means that the location is um, a site that the researcher is in charge of. So the subjects are recruited to that location and the experiment is done at that location. The researcher controls nearly all the aspects of the environment except the subject's behavior. And so what this means is that the researcher sets up all of the elements of the treatment, all of the conditions under which the subject will be um, engaging and applies the treatment and the, the thing that they're not controlling, the subject's behavior, is how they respond to that treatment. Um, so the goal here is to isolate other potential causal factors so that you're able to really assess the effect of your treatment. Um, and so and as an example of this, you might do a study where you want to know how national security themed campaign ads affect support for candidates with major foreign policy experience. Um, and so perhaps you brought a bunch of people together um, and showed them this campaign ad. So that's an ad that aired um, in 2008 for Hillary Clinton's campaign uh, when she was running against Barack Obama. Um, so you might do a treatment group and a control group. So the treatment group, you're going to be showing this campaign ad. Um, the control group has um, just watching an ad for Coca-Cola. So you want to create an environment when you're doing this sort of lab experiment that is reminiscent of um, the way that people would actually experience some sort of ad. So here, you know, as I mentioned, your lab doesn't um, consist of, a, of an, a, a chemistry laboratory. Instead, you'll have some nice comfy sofas. People will be sitting around. There'll be a coffee table. Um, it'll be a nice environment. Um, they'll look like a living room. And they'll be watching a TV. Um, and so that's what the lab would look like. So you have the exact same you know, sofa, the same art on the wall, um, the same degree of lighting, the same TV that you show the treatment group that's watching the Hillary Clinton ad and that you show the uh, control group that's watching a Coca-Cola commercial. Um, so the researcher is able to control all these elements and then assess what's the difference between the treatment and control group in terms of the degree of their support for a candidate such as Hillary Clinton. Um, and by virtue of doing it in this way, you're able to control for all of these other potential confounding factors that if you just did a survey of people who had seen this sort of ad, um, that you might have other problems that emerge from that. So for example, if you just did a survey of people, you might have a lot of people who um, don't really watch television. And maybe that's correlated with support for a candidate like Hillary Clinton. Um, and so this is a way to control for that factor. Another kind of experiment that we see in political science are field experiments. And field experiments um, are experiments that are done in an environment where the researcher has really limited control beyond the intervention that they have conducted. 
Um, so they're do they're happening in the field. They're happening in the real world. And so, in contrast to lab experiments where the researcher is able to entirely control everything um, and do it in a very narrow period of time, a field experiment will often take place over a prolonged period of time, and there'll be a lot of um, potential for things to go a little haywire along the way, but it's closer to what we would experience in the real world. So the relationship between the researcher and the subject is conducted through factors outside of the researcher's control. Um, once again, the real world intervenes. They're not able to perfectly ensure that the treatment is administered exactly the same way as the control group um, experiences their placebo. So what does this look like? Um, so an example of a field experiment is um, here we have, um, this is a, a photo from Mexico with the implementation of the Oportunidades program. And this is a, an actual experiment that happened. Researchers instructed the Mexican government to randomly assign poor communities to receive a new social program. And this social program called Oportunidades um, is a conditional cash transfer, meaning that um, families would receive cash benefits if they enrolled their children in school. Um, because a major problem is that children in poor countries like Mexico have a, a trade-off um, involved that they really the parents want to send them to school, um, but they need their labor to help around, especially if they're if they are farming. Um, so this is something that um, can make up for that. And so you want to look and see well does this program actually affect um, school attendance? So what they did is that they convinced the Mexican government to assign some communities to receive the program and other communities to not. They were planning on rolling out the program throughout the country, but in a gradual way. So they did some um, test communities first, and then they compared over time the effects on school attendance, and they saw that um, programs or communities that had received opportunities did indeed have a larger degree of school attendance. They also looked at effects on more political variables, um, such as vote support for the ruling party, um, and they found and, and how much um, these programs were conditional on people voting for the ruling party, and they found that they were not conditional on voting for the ruling party. So here's something where researchers um, charged the Mexican government to implement this in an experimental fashion, it was an experiment, right? You did have a treatment and control group, um, but there, you know, as things play out over a span of a couple of years, there are a lot of things that interfere to make it messier than we saw with that lab experiment. On the other hand, this is a lot closer to the real world than it is when you have a lab experiment where you're putting some people on sofas in your university office. And the third type of experiment uh, that have become really common are survey experiments. And survey experiments um, randomly assign survey respondents into treatment and control groups. Um, so they're, un unlike with a regular survey, there are actual treatment and control groups here. And you give them different surveys. So in the survey itself, the survey becomes the, the experimental treatment. Um, you manipulate the wording or the placement of questions in a survey. Um, and the, the treatment is the survey wording placement. Um, so this could be because you think the wording of a question or simply asking a question will predispose people to have a certain attitudinal response or placing certain questions first will have some sort of effect. Um, so talking through an example here, um, this is a picture from Brazil from an anti-corruption movement. Um, so here's an example of a content of question survey. Um, so, so my friends did a, did a survey experiment where they asked whether knowing about corruption allegations affected people's willingness to vote for corrupt candidates. And so they did a survey experiment where they asked people about their willingness to um, vote for certain candidates. They asked them how important corruption was to them. And then for the treatment group, they also informed people about uh, accusations of corruption against specific Brazilian politicians and then asked how willing people were to support those politicians afterwards. 
Um, and then for the control group, they just ask them questions about how important corruption is, period, to them. So the idea is that you, you're you testing for how much knowledge itself affects your willingness to vote for these corrupt candidates. Uh, you can imagine another kind of survey uh, experiment that looks at the order of questions. So if reminding people early on about human rights abuses in Syria would make them more willing to welcome Syrian refugees. So looking at that issue of priming them, of reminding people of the potential uh, atrocities that have been committed, does that change their view on this policy issue? So these have been the three types of experiments that we see in political science, and we'll talk a little bit more in class about what they look like in practice and what are some of the pros and cons of each.